My day job of appraising planes gives me a chance to meet some amazing people and see some incredible airplanes. The Grumman F6F Hellcat is one of my favorites, and Rob Collings brought an award-winning example to the EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and he showed us why the Hellcat was one of the most important fighters of World War II. I'm Rob Collings with the Collings Foundation. We're here at Oshkosh, and I had a chance to fly in this beautiful 1944 F6F-3 Hellcat. The Hellcat's one of the most historically significant aircraft from World War II, definitely one of the top two in the Pacific Theater along with the SBD. This is the aircraft that really took the fight to the Japanese. The Hellcat had destroyed over 5,100 Japanese aircraft for the loss of just slightly over 200 Hellcats in air-to-air -air combat. So about a 19 to 1 kill to loss ratio, the best of any recent fighter of all time. And the only other airplane that ever eclipsed that is the F-15 Eagle. So this thing is just, it's a fighter pilot's aircraft. It was designed by Grumman to be stable, where the young 20, 21-year-old pilots could fly on and off of an aircraft carrier, but deadly at the same time. A great gun platform with its 650 caliber machine guns, where you could actually start to turn with a zero, outclimb them, and was faster. We were really fortunate that we were able to uh, acquire this aircraft through a trade with the National Marine Corps Museum. We're the first civilian owner operator of this aircraft. It's been strictly military its whole life. We decided to use American Aero Services who restored our F4U Corsair uh, and also our A36. Both were Oshkosh Grand Champion winners in the past and they do amazing work. So this restoration's taken about six years even though it was a complete aircraft. A lot of people might think it came out of Lake Michigan. It did not. It has always been a complete aircraft its entire life. What's well, that 476 on the side? Looks like it came out of Home Depot. Looks like we're parked in the wrong neighborhood, right? Um, the 476 is the last three digits of the bureau number. So when these aircraft left Grumman and went out on the flight line for their flight test, they would spray paint these numbers on there so the pilots knew where to go. Also on the propeller, you'll say fuel, gas, OK, and the name. So the test pilot who went out there knew the planes fueled, which aircraft they're going to, and what they're going to be doing for the flight. The really cool thing about this airplane, third test flight it did was with a female pilot. Grumman had three female test pilots, and one of them, Cecil Teddy Kenyon, her nickname was Teddy, was the pilot of this aircraft. And not only did she fly Hellcats, but she was a real pioneer aviatrix. She learned to fly in the late 20s, she became an aerobatic champion in 1933, and she won $5,000. Doesn't sound like much now, but $5,000 in 1933 was a lot of money, and she could go out and buy a Waco and continue her aviation career. We just found an original Camel cigarette ad from 1944 featuring Teddy Kenyon as she was there as this Grumman test pilot. So we wanted to honor Teddy Kenyon and all the people who built these aircraft in Long Island by spray painting this number on there, we're kind of telling the story of the war effort. Grumman did a remarkable job. They built over 12,000 of these airplanes. It wasn't multiple factories, that was out of one factory. So how they did that is just nothing short of amazing. And this airplane, every rivet you see in here was done by a Grumman employee. So we're really proud to carry that legacy on. I'm Gary Norville. I own American Aero Services in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Over the past five years, we've restored this Grumman F6F-3 Hellcat for the Collings Foundation from Stowe, Massachusetts. The biggest challenge that we've had in restoring aircraft like this, mainly even like the Hellcat and the Corsair, are finding parts. What we can't find, we manufacture, or we have other manufacturers make them. With the Mustangs and so forth, they're relatively easier because you can get new spars, new wings, and fuselages. But the rarer stuff like the Hellcat and the Corsair and the P-38, there's a lot of fabrication that needs to be done because the parts just don't exist anymore. One of the greatest resources that we've had over the past 30, 40 years is Warbird Parts and Memorabilia, which was owned by Jay Whistler in Tampa, Florida. He's since retired. He has provided parts for so many of the warbirds over these years that if it wasn't for him, there'd probably be less aircraft flying. You want me to sign that for you? Okay. okay we'll do that. There you go. Thank you. My pleasure. I remember going to the Harlingen, Texas, the CAF air show, 
when I was like six, seven years old and flying down there. And that was an amazing experience. These experiences of, of being out here, whether it's at Oshkosh or a local air show, are so important for the younger generations to inspire them. And I was inspired, and look what happened. You know, here we are. We both have this passion for aviation, and we want to share it with the other young generations so they can carry on this tradition. The Collins Foundation was started back in 1977 to preserve living history events. For the last 30 years, we've had the Wings of Freedom tour. We've been flying a B-17 Flying Fortress, B-24 Liberator, and more recently, B-25 Mitchell, P-51 Mustang, and a new addition this year, P-40 Warhawk, around the country. It's a traveling museum where people can come out, go inside the aircraft, see what it was like for these brave patriots we had during World War II that protected our freedom. You can even take the experience further by flying in one of these aircraft, actually hands-on flying a Mustang or a Warhawk or going in one of these heavy bombers to experience that. I can certainly attest to the thrill of flying with the Collings Foundation over the years. Part of the foundation that's not out touring around the country are a lot of the aircraft like the Hellcat. And these are very historically significant airplanes that don't lend themselves to flying around the country quite like the tour does, but we want to preserve that history. We want to preserve the legacy that all the naval aviators had in World War II, and that's why we have this Hellcat. We've restored it back to the way it was. The Collins Foundation has done an amazing job of saving aviation history. And the Grumman Hellcat is a great example of the efforts that the foundation will go to to restore history to exacting standards. You can visit the Collings Foundation at the American Heritage Museum in Hudson, Massachusetts, or catch them on the road like I did in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I'm sure that Rob Collings would share a story of his passion to chase planes.